So uh, just finished up our, uh, our red zone, gold zone day. I thought it was uh, good. I thought the whole week was good. I thought the guys were focused and uh, on their assignments and, and doing a good job with their tempo and practice. That was really good. Um, obviously, a, a lot of opportunity, you know, in this week for a lot of guys. So, uh, you know, because of the injury situation we're in. And uh, so those guys are looking forward to that and uh, looking forward to executing, putting their best foot forward and uh, going out there competing against the Vikings. So uh, I'll open up the questions from there. Matt, it's obviously been a, a week where you guys were forward earlier in the week about the emotions that guys were feeling and, and being open to all those things. As the week has progressed, how have you seen guys dealing with that? And now, obviously, as the, the news from Cincinnati comes out in, in positive format, how are you seeing the, the vibe in the building? Yeah, I think it's great. You know, it's, it's really the power of prayer. You know, when you have, uh, uh, we had a focused prayer, like I said, on Monday, Monday's meeting, and we had guys break out from there and talk to their position coaches, and some of that was very emotional, um, you know, for guys. And uh, we got a chance to talk it out. And I think that, uh, you know, obviously the good news certainly lifts, you know, a heavy heart, you know, when you hear that, that's uh, positive. You know, I got a text from uh, Leslie Frazier, who's a good friend of mine, um, this morning, you know, about uh, an in that was from Monday. I texted him, you know, so Monday evening. So uh, it was uh, great to hear hear from him. So it was really good. You've been around the league and the sport for a long time. How much have you seen it evolve in terms of, of the openness to, to letting guys express themselves in a way that, you know, 20, 25 years ago was never part yeah, of? Yeah, I think that's changed for sure. Um, you know, over the years, you know, so I've been in this 30 years and you, you used to have a stiff upper lip and, you know, we keep everything inside. And I think that uh, it's okay to get help. It's okay to, you know, work through those things with people. Uh, if it's a friend, that's fine. If it's a clinician, that's fine too. And uh, there's nothing wrong with that. You got signed EQ to a contract extension. Yeah. What went into the decision to bring him back for another year? Yeah, just the man, you know, uh, first. You know, we always talk about, you know, does he love football, you know, and exhibit that every single day and every play. And uh, EQ does that. You know, he shows up to work every day and he works. And when you work on the practice field like him, um, those are the kind of guys we want to keep around. Fans, you know, often look at it, look at production numbers that say this is sure. a good wide receiver, bad wide receiver. But are there things you're seeing behind the scenes that maybe fans don't? Yeah, yeah. Tyke, Tyke's done a good job with uh, with our receivers blocking the perimeter. Obviously, when you're, uh, you know, the stats bear that out. And uh, if you watch the receivers block, you know, they do a lot of crack blocking on defensive ends, inside linebackers, safeties, and their second effort, you know, blocks too. And he's certainly uh, done that along with the rest of the receivers this year. Matt, uh, Rod. Chase Claypool and Cody Whitehair going to play Sunday? Yeah. Is there anyone that's not on the injury report that you're going to hold out? Uh, I don't think so. You know, I'll do I'll do substitution review with the coaches uh, after this uh, after the podium, and I talk about who's going in and how many plays we're going to get them and and what's going what that's going to look like. But uh, we'll get a final answer here coming up. Also, uh, Sterling Weatherford has been on there with an illness for a long time. Is he all right? Yeah, he's good. Yeah, he's good. He's fine. Uh, he, I mean, he's going through some things, but he'll be fine. With more injuries to your cornerbacks uh, this week, who are you looking at to fill the, those places? And you know, how, what's the challenge of getting third string guys ready? To yeah, play? you know, this is the guys that are on our roster. You, know, you got OJ and, and you know Brian, and those guys are going to be stepping in, uh, you know, for in those roles. And uh, that's important that they get uh, put their best foot forward. You know, um, you know, the techniques and fundamentals that we teach are simple. Um, you know, and, and they've been working on them since they've been here. So, uh, and I'm excited about the opportunity for those guys. You know, we get a chance to look at those guys. What's your appreciation for the season that Justin Jefferson has had for the Vikings and what he what he gives them? Yeah, just to, you know, obviously when you have a uh, historic numbers like that, um, you know, going all the way back, it's a, that's a really good uh, season, obviously. You know, and uh, he's just a, a great talent. You know he's a great talent. He's very strong. Uh, he can he can do all all things that you want a receiver to do. Um, and and Kurt's done a good job of getting him the ball and feeding him the ball this year. Hey, you may talk about the opportunity. Um, and you don't have to necessarily name a guy, but can somebody make an impression in, in Week 18? Like, can you put a guy who's a roster fringe guy put up the tape that can matter moving forward? Yeah, I think that's true. But I, I also think that another thing that when you when you asked that question that came to mind was that it's also for the other guys. You know, we want to see guys finish. We want to see them do things the right way, um, you know, and play the right style. Yeah, what went into uh, some of the guys at different jersey numbers on today? Yeah, it's uh, places I've been, that they've done that every Friday. So this is the first time they've done it here. And it's really uh, just a jersey swap uh, for the end of the year. They were just having fun, so. 
weeks ago you were rotating Alex Leatherwood at right tackle, and then he was a healthy scratch last week. Where's he at, and where, where do you view him going in the weekend? Yeah, I think he's, he's doing well. Uh, he's been working, and uh, we'll see. And I talked to Simo later on today uh, where he's going to be, uh, you know, in terms of this game. But, uh, you know, he's, he's doing well, and I think he's, he's uh, you know, getting better slowly. You know, I know that he went into that one game and had some adversities and all that, but, uh, you know, he's still working. Do you think there's anything Justin can take away from having to sit on Sunday in terms of motivating him to get this taste out of his mouth going into next year? Yeah, uh, I would just say that uh, when uh, Justin, you know, loves to compete. You know, he, he always does, and uh, he'll get something out of this this performance by watching the other guys. And uh, you know, he'll watch the tape and he'll learn just like he always does. He obviously won't be playing relevant games the last game of the season. Mm -hmm. Your team actually, you know, last year certainly played one. Is, is that how do you motive, how do you self motivate for a game like this? Yeah, it's just about individual, you know, individual pride and individual effort. You know, making sure that, and then the groups, the units, you know, the offense and defense and special teams. And, and our guys are, have been working all year. So uh, I'm excited to see him play this week. Matt, uh, Luke Getzey was interviewed last year for head coaching position, could be a candidate again this offseason. Uh, what kind of advice would you give him? And then what kind of head coach could he be in this league? Uh, Who would you say? Luke Getzey. Yeah, um, I would say. Uh, you know, it's a process. You know, when I went through the process, you know, I, when I was a college coach, I got, you know, interviewed a couple times, you know, and then you learn something every time. And then, um, you know, in pro football, you know, I got interviewed another, uh, I think it was four or five times maybe. Um, but uh, it's a process. You learn as you go. You know, you learn how, how you are and you really finalize your answers in terms of what, when you get interviewed, you have to have all, all the answers from, you know, really from this topic all the way to the other topic and dealing with a lot of different subjects. And uh, um, it helps you as you go through those experiences to really sit back and reflect and think about how you want to run an organization, how you want to run your football team. And um, it's just nothing like experience. So I would just say that you got to really be mindful and sit down and think. You gotta, it's got to get a lot of thought to it of what your philosophies are, you know, what's your, what you want to really bring to the table. And then can you execute that plan? Because a lot of times words are words. Can you actually execute the plan, um, you know, through time, through effort, through being resilient um, that you're saying to the organization, that particular organization? What do you think he could bring to that position? Um, you know, he's very positive, very smart. Um, I think he, he's high energy. Um, he's very creative. Um, I think he bring a lot to it. You know, he's a, he's a big uh, camaraderie guy. He, he's, he's a real good teammate. Um, he loves, loves to the, the, be with the guys and bring guys together. Uh, so I think that's a big, big component to be a head coach. Yeah, what, what kind of impact has Justin Jones made in the last, especially in the last month or so? Because you know, based on the importance of like the three technique position in your defense, yep. frankly, it seems like the production quite hasn't quite been there. But on the other, he, you know, he sees himself. Even though he's played some outside and played around, he sees himself as a three technique still. So. Where does he stand right now based on what the, the year he had and what you need at that position? Yeah, we just had a conversation uh, uh, the other day. Uh, just I think it was yesterday or the day before in the hallway, and I, I grabbed him for 10 minutes and just talked to him about his year, and I thought he got better. I thought he improved every single week, and I thought at the end of the year he was playing better, you know, in terms of his, his gap control, in terms of his penetration, in terms of him playing the blocks, you know, in the run game, you know, and then in the pass rush. You know, he's still learning his fastball, and he's doing a good job with that. But, uh, again, I thought he had a really good year, and I thought he started to really improve um, at the end. Matt, given how Tevin's season started with, you know, being a tackle and being demoted, what, what have you learned about him throughout everything you've yeah, I mean, it's you know, obviously a, a, you know, a lot of adversity for him this year. You know, he started out training camp and was injured. You know, didn't get a lot of reps in there. You know, and then we slide him in to, to guard, and I think he enjoyed that success, you know, during that time. And, uh, we, you know, we did too. You know, he's really um, you know, a positive player in there at the guard spot. You know, and then he started dealing with some more injuries again. So I think it was kind of a roller coaster up and down year for him. Um, but you certainly can see that he's got some, uh, you know, uh, upside to that position playing guard. How have you personally weathered the losses this year? Even knowing that you, what you were up against roster-wise this year in a rebuild and everything like that, I'm sure you were hoping your first year would go better than this. Yeah, um, I would really say this, that uh, when you're looking at the big picture of it, it's, uh, you know, you have a core group of young guys. 
you know, that you're that you're developing the rookies, the second year players, those guys right there. And that's going to be the foundational floor for wh what we want to develop. And uh, when you go through a season, you know, you're always working on developing those guys. And I think it's important that you do that. Um, but uh, in the same respect, you're, you're winning, trying to win every single game. And you're looking at that, you know, in terms of, you know, competing, making sure we do things, learning how to finish. You know, we have to learn how to finish games better. Obviously, you saw that during the course of the year. And uh, I think we learned a lot, a lot about ourselves in terms of sticking together, staying positive, and understanding, you know, the, the process of going through the NFL season. And I think uh, the guys did a really nice job of that. They were always – you guys saw it in the locker room. Right. You guys were there the whole year. They were always positive, always upbeat, always looking to the next opponent, and uh, always competing. And uh, they did a nice job of that. For you, though, you want to win these games. I mean, you have spent your whole career trying to win every game. Sure. You dealt with it. Yeah, it's it's hard. It's it's hard. It's it, the the adversity. You know, certainly is hard. But you you ha you have to. Uh, you know, once that twenty four hour rule flips, you got to flip it over, and you got to look to the next week and how can we can improve um, each individual man and their techniques and fundamentals and improve our football team as we go. Has it helped you knowing coming in that you had security that everybody in the building knows what's going on, knows what you're trying to build toward, that you have you have some time here. Well, I, uh, I don't really look at it that way. I just look at it one one game at a time, like you have to as a coach, um, in building your football team, and 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 the coaches really did a good job of uh, developing a lot of these players. Um, you can go across the board and look at it, and the coaches did a nice job of sticking with the task at hand, and that's about developing the player and developing the the uh, philosophies of the of the football team. Matt, in the, in the last one, in the development of fields. Yeah. Over the last nine months, what's most significant to you about? who he is as a, a player and who he is as a leader. Yeah, I really got a chance to, obviously, with being with him the whole year, to really get to know him as a person. And, uh, man, I'm, I'm very impressed, you know, with his resiliency, with his grit, and, you know, how he fights, you know, how he works. You know, he really is able to, uh, you know, take – a, a great play, like the great plays that he had this year, and also, you know, a play that wasn't, you know, so good, and move to the next one. And that's a great quality to have, you know, as a leader. And I saw him really come out of his, uh, you know, shell a little bit, you know, in terms of the first couple games. You know, you saw him come out as soon as he really started to perform and make these plays that he's capable of. Um, you really started to see his leadership grow uh, during that time, and that was what's uh, was most impressive about him. What about from a player standpoint? Things that you, you've learned this year. Um, I just learned that, uh, you know, man, he's an amazing athlete. You know, he really is, and he's really, uh, you know, can really lead this team, you know, and, he, and he's done that. He's done a good job of that, and he's certainly developing. You know, we know that, and he's going to continue to develop as we go.